I'll give you a fact. One, well, I'm one fact. You got a fact? Yeah, I have a fact right here. Let's talk about this right here. We haven't talked about this si yeah. since Rabbi's been here. One of the best-selling books of all time. That's right. New, New York Times best-selling book. Of, uh, almost of all time, probably, of Christian books, right? Rabbi, I'm pretty sure it really is. And the mystery of the Shemitah together has sold over two and a half million copies. That's incredible. Now, the Harbinger is where it all began, right, Rabbi? Yes, yes. And I can remember being, um, we were in our private dining after you were here. You yes. revealed... You actually, the first time anybody saw The Harbinger was, was here on this first broadcast. Time, first time I ever saw it, and the first book I ever signed was to you and Jim. It was. That's it was. And such an honor. Well, and it's always a been a here. New York Times bestseller. Does well, well it, came, it began oh. at that time, that um, I guess January when yeah. it came out, right. of 2012. Right. You know, exactly. About 100 weeks or something. Right. 100, 100 weeks, weeks right. on the bestseller list. Yeah. That is an amazing thing. Exactly. An amazing thing. And Rabbi, here's the other thing is he, he, God has opened doors for him and he walks through those doors. And I know, and I know Rabbi, he's been sick. He's had to fight the flu or whatever like that. And what, what happens is he opens doors for you, Rabbi, and you go and you, you, I, I know that you speak at before the Congress, mm -hmm. you have spoken right there in like Statutory Hall, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever been to Statutory Hall at the Capitol? If you haven't, you need to see that. It's amazing, it's isn't it? United Nations, I know United, that. Exactly, exactly. But to go and speak the in white, front of these people. The Capitol, right there at the Capitol. It's it's pretty awesome, I'm sure. Yeah. What well, that time with the Lincoln, you and Lincoln spoke. Well, he was dead. Yeah, well, Lincoln, <laughs> but that's at where, the Lincoln that's Memorial. Lincoln, yeah, that's where Lincoln was when he was in the, in the, in the house. You know, that's yeah. where the... After the inauguration, that's where they all go and have their thing there. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, that opened up. I mean, that was a, a, amazing. It's, it's been every year, but that's opened up because of the Harbinger, because someone saw me on television talking about it. That's right. And they said, we have to do something, and the Lord just opened up. So every year, the, they have this service in the, in the Capitol for members of Congress and, and leaders. So I know it's, I mean, it's a God thing. And <laughs> when you go in there, you, you know, I, I've shared this. You know, I just have to, I cannot hold back there because I don't know, I don't know how long that will be. And, and you know, you, ha you just have to do what God says. And that's, you know, it's a prophetic, prophetic moment. God wants us to speak to powers and to yes, thrones. Yes, absolutely. One of my favorite things about Rabbi was that you were a host of a radio show called The Two Jewish Boys. <laughs> Two Nice Jewish Boys. <laughs> Two Nice Jewish Boys. Years. That I was, was years I was asked, ago. yeah, that's how it, the person, it wasn't my show, it was someone else, but when he asked, he's the one who asked me, a great dear friend, asked me to come into ministry as, yeah. as in, to lead the congregation, and he also had this program. In New York, it was, it was known very well, a uh, live, crazy program called The Two Nice Jewish Boys, so I came in for that in the ministry, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And we used to get Orthodox Jews calling and everybody, you know, Muslim calling and it was wild but that was right on uh, cutting edge because you guys yeah. would discuss topics that oh, yeah. most people Always. would not talk about yeah. and i love seeing the pictures and <laughs> you know he went out to be with the lord now and yes. passed away yes, right? right but you travel all around the world uh -huh. and you've been in india you've been in haiti honduras i mean Brazil. I mean, if once you read the stories about you yeah. in brazil and even one of my favorite prophecies that you had was in cuba Yes. That is a, yes. an amazing yeah. story. I, I will I say something, but I'm not, I won't say it now because it's so much. It's a whole other thing. But what just happened, you know, Fidel Castro, since we last read it, you know, his yes. reign, he, he, it ended, you know, after he was, he was in power for, a, you know, almost half a century. Mm -hmm. But there was a prophetic thing that had to do when I, when I came down there and something I gave him that we realized afterwards, and I'm not, I, God knows, gave the exact time of the end of his reign. Wow. And, and I won't, it's too much to share wow. now. Oh, God Rabbi. didn't, I mean, amazing things in Cuba. I'll share maybe next time. Yeah, but, but it's, you got to do. Yeah, I will. It's an am amazing story of what God did, it, it, prophetic. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. We, we put together this family gathering bundle. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Yes. And it's only $450. Yes, sir. Right. And, and so that is a year and four months. Yes, sir. That is a, a tremendous saving. Mm -hmm. And when you get this food, you get the fruit variety bucket, 199 serving. You get a vegetable variety bucket, 109 servings. You get the gluten-free black bean bucket, 215 servings. You get the Fiesta bucket, 196. That's that's the whole Mexican bucket. Yes, sir. Right. And then we have the French toast kit, which was just 
developed With last John month. Sherry. And so it's a $925 value. So you're going to save $475. And then you get this bonus of two boxes of each flavor of Frontier Bites. Right. And uh, so there's macadamia, pineapple, coconut. Mm -hmm. There's pecan, cherry, cinnamon. There's almond, blueberry, lemon. Mm. And so you get uh, how many boxes of that now? Two of each flavor. This is a special, special product. Mm -hmm. That's only going to be for this special week. That's right. That's right. That's good. Okay. Now, you have the new meal extenders. Yes. This is a John Shorey thing. This meal extenders is 1,837 servings. That's good. That's a, that's this, there's almost two years of food. Right. So. right. And extenders, they're like... Put some water in the soup, Ma. <laughs> yes. Because we got company. That's you right. Know, and that's what extenders are. Yes. And I, I think we ought to order one right now. I do too. This because is great. we've got lots of food stored away. Right. But when people drop in, right, they can eat a lot. Well, well, the extenders <laughs> are. Some you have to add extenders. some, that's some right. extenders like okay, lentil, lentil bean bucket, which is three hundred and eighty-six servings. I could sing the Hallelujah chorus. Uh, I, love, <laughs> I know I love lentils. I'm a lentil fan. It's true. They give me energy. Yes. Can't you tell? Yes. Okay, pinto beans. My four hundred and thirty-two yes, servings. That's right. So then, what's the next one? White rice. Bucket. How many servings? 405. <laughs> then what is this vegetable stew mix? 388 servings. Yes. So then the potato slice bucket. Mm -hmm. So what can you do with a potato slice? Anything. Eat it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever you want to do. You can fry it up. You can boil it. You can add it to stew, soups, whatever you want to do. Okay, so here we have the new meal extenders. These are extenders. Right. Well, with the but meal extender bundle, you also get a bonus yes. as well. You receive two boxes of each flavor of the Frontier Bites yes. that we all love so much. And that's macadamia pineapple coconut, pecan cherry cinnamon, almond blueberry lemon, and they are wonderful. They're only eight ingredients in so these. You're getting things. one year, eight months of food, mm -hmm. so for five hundred and fifty dollars, and you're getting this set of uh, two boxes of and six each, pouches. Oh, two boxes of each flavor each Frontier box. Bites. So call one eight 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 nine eight eight one five eight eight or write us today at PO Box. 7330 Branson, Missouri, 65615, or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. Yes. And today we're going to be talking about Jezebel. Yes. Ooh. The wife of the are we king. Ready? Is, are we would she be this? queen we're Jezebel? Ready. Are we ready for Yes, she was. We're ready. Are we ready for this? Yes. Okay, let me let me let me just say this, because I want to say it each time, at mm -hmm. least this we are not ever to make anybody our enemy. We are to pray for all people who are even who are against the Bible in, in their actions. This is not, this is, you know, we have to, uh, you know, this is not saying that the people in there are the same, but they are following a template as in the same way as Israel's fall. This links to how America has fallen from God. So having said that, okay, mm -hmm. so we've been looking at the mystery of the kings, which is the first time I'm sharing this outside of Beth Israel. And that is that, that there's a template in the fall of Israel, not only the harbingers, and that's got to actually overlap, it overlaps with the harbingers, but same northern kingdom where you're going to see this amazing parallel in the, uh -huh. in the fall of America from God. You're going to see, so we looked the first time at the first one, which is King Ahav or Ahab, who was a man who was, it says, you know, the, the, the commentaries will say he was strategic, tactical, but he was also, he had some moral weakness as well, but he helped accelerate the fall of his nation, the spiritual fall. Well, we looked at the, what happened, and this, this is matching up. It's going to match up even more. In the Clinton administration, Bill Clinton was known as all that, um, and he accelerated abortion, accelerated all these things. He was the first president in history to be, come out all in favor behind all these things, which were anti the Bible and all these things. So we had that. Now, now let's go to the next template. The next template is he wasn't alone. Ahab, it wasn't just Ahab, it was Ahab and Jezebel. Who was Jezebel? She was a Phoenician princess who was probably given to Ahab in marriage as a, probably a political 
alliance. Her real name was Isabel. That's the real, we call her Jezebel, Isabel. Uh, she was raised worshiping Baal. Her father was a priest of Baal and, and Ashtoreth, um, and who actually killed the king and became king in his place. And that was, that was kind of, that was her child. That's what she was raised at. Um, and so she came to the new land. She came to Israel, but she, instead of adopting to Israel, she, she took her ways and sought to impose it on Israel. She sought to impose unbiblical ways on a biblical nation or new morality on a, not against the traditional morality. And so the template of Ahab and Jezebel is a, a strategic but, but morally weak king who is, the Bible says, was incited or goaded by his wife, provoked by his wife. She, in many ways, Jezebel was the power behind the throne in many ways. To much of the people of Israel, she was seen as a foreigner in a foreign morality. Um, she wasn't trusted, undoubtedly, by many. Um, and she did have an agenda there. So it was unprecedented in Israel's history because the first time you have a co-regency, you got the, the king, it wasn't just King Ahab, with the, it, was king Ahab, it was Ahab and Jezebel, major, major person. So here we go, and again, we love the people, pray for the people, they don't know what they're doing in this respect, but the phenomenon, of Je here it is, in American history, we had another unprecedented phenomenon for the first time we had in the White House, we had not only a president, but we had, in a sense, a co-president, and she, they even said, you're getting two for one. We had, with Bill Clinton, we had Hillary Clinton. She was centrally involved with her husband's rise. Even as early as the 70s, she's saying, he's going to become the president. In the 70s, he's going to be the president of the United States. The template of Jezebel is one that, and, it, that, and let me say also something else. It's not that every part of a template has to be the thing, but there are key signs in it. Is that a woman f marries a man from a conservative land, but she brings in her own values. Well, Hillary Clinton married Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is from a conservative land. He's from the Bible Belt. And when she came, she came as the wife of the governor, she was seen as, you know, really having another kind of morality. She did not take the name Clinton. She refused at the beginning. She was only Hillary Rodham. And that was, and that was seen as almost like she was imposing another morality. She was a radical feminist. And, the, and here in, a, in the Bible Belt. And finally, he was defeated for, for, as governor. And so what happened is they, what they did is they believed a lot of it was because, well, some of it was because of this, of her. And so she only then adopted the name Clinton. It was only, and they got back in power. Um, she embraced a, a morality that was in so many ways opposed to the clear biblical values, a new morality. She attempted to, she held on to her own, her, that, that identity. Um, the, in the template of Ahab and Jezebel, you have, again, this co-regency. Well, never in history, never in American history did we have this. But she actually moved into the White House and actually had an office in the White House. The aides called it Hillary Land, that she actually ruled with her husband, a co-regency. In the template of, of Jezebel, you have, you have the, 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 the king is kind of has a weakness about him. You know, he has, but the, the, the queen is considered to be the harder one. And that's exactly what you had as well. Influencing. They said that Clinton, they said, never said no to his wife in these things. Now, it says that, it says that she, he, he, she goaded him or incited him. Now, one of the key things about Baal worship, and it's not that she knows it or they know it, but one of the things of Baal worship is the killing of babies. There has never been, and this is the key thing here, there's never been anybody in American history, in, in, in American, uh, the spotlight of national politics who has been so pro-abortion as Hillary Clinton. Nobody. Never has been. Um, and that is the template of Jezebel. And with the people who were actually, who were tr of traditional values, who opposed Ahab and the prophets and all that, they, Ahab lashed out at them, so did Jezebel, and so did Hillary Clinton in the, in the, in the whole thing with this. When, when Clinton when he signed those executive orders, fourth day of his presidency, wiping away all these, expanding abortion all over the place, the one who incited him to do that was Hillary Clinton. They said, their staff said, don't do it. She incited him. Uh, one of the things, that, one of the things that, that Hillary Clinton was known for in the White House was to, to try to nationalize health care, as we know. One of the things about that was it involved, it involved abortion on demand. People don't realize it. That plan would have had that everybody was paying for abortion. In the template of Jezebel, she's trying to force the worship of Baal, which involves the killing of babies on all America. Now, again, not that she knows it here, but that's the exact, exact 
template here. Now, let me say there's more about this, but let me say something. Now, you think most believers think of Ahab and Jezebel, and they think, okay, you know, they came, and then, then their reign ended. Didn't quite happen. What happened was the reign of Ahab ended, but Jezebel went on. Went on. Mm. And that's what we're going to see in the next template. Okay? It went on. Okay? But before that, I'm going to say something else. The template is so kind of precise that in the next time, when we come back to it in a, a few moments, but it's going to actually hold the key of, it's going to give the timing of these things. Okay? So we'll get, we'll get to that in a, in, a mo, in a few moments. Okay? All right. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, but I wanted to share something, you know, uh, we were talking Mondo before, because I want to I wanna intersperse it so we, we go from heavy to lighter. But, but um, I was in Israel yeah. since I last came here, uh, since I was last here. Uh, we had an interesting incident, and that is that uh, we were on the Temple Mount, and I had the tour about 400 believers on the Temple Mount, and the Muslim authorities kept following me around the whole time. And finally, what happened is we had a big thing, a confrontation. I spoke on the Temple Mount. I spoke of the Temple. Naturally, you know, that there was a temple here. I mean, that's kind of, you know. And because I did, they, they came, they started coming on all around me, and they, the Muslims threw us off the Temple Mount. And, you know, because we mentioned that there was a temple on the Temple Mount, you know, and this made news there. If we had, if we had tried to protest, it probably would have been an international thing because things happen on the Temple Mount, you know. But it shows the warfare that is still there. And that, that I want to lead wow. to something that's very important that is prophetic, it is Jerusalem. And that's one of the things also on the album that's so important that we know the prophetic, that, that Jerusalem's the center. So let me just take a, a break to talk about Jerusalem for a moment, and then we'll get back to Jezebel and the, okay. the temple. Okay. Yeah. This uh, is powerful stuff. Yeah. It really and, is. And, and, and this is stuff that nobody dares preach. Mm -mm. And it is, and I'm telling you, I'm, I have the original notes. And the stuff in there that you're leaving out, can't. You're too shocked to, I mean, not you're shocked, There's no but time. we're shocked yeah. to go on television with it oh, too. And uh, so, but you can have the videos and right. get this set right. for the gift $55. of $55. You get the eight video mm -hmm. set of these mysteries and all of it's in there. This whole mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. revelation mm -hmm. of, of yes. the, the amazing, amazing experience. And we're going to, we're going to share some of it on TV, but we don't share 10% of it hardly. Right. Yeah. Of what it, what's yeah. in it. Yes. And so if you want to get that set. Yes. And find out what the detail by detail by detail, it'll blow your mind. It will. <laughs> We're reliving right. yeah. the Bible days right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, for get to $55, you can get the one set. But then for the gift of um, $85, you get that set. The Isn't Mysteries it? of Kings and More. This eight DVD set contains incredible mysteries like The Mysteries of the Kings, part one and two, where you will learn of an explosive mystery that lies behind everything that was, that is, and that is yet to come. It links up with the Harbinger and it has everything to do with what's happening in the world right now. In the tracing of your life, you will discover the master plan and the blueprint that exists for every moment of your life. Then open the deep and wonderful mystery of you and Jesus that will change forever the way you read the gospel in the mystery called the identical. How can you have a breakthrough in your walk, your relationships, your callings, even a breakthrough over habits and sin. Learn the specific key you need to guarantee the breakthrough in your life in the momentum secret of breakthrough. Then the answer of where we are right now, judgment or revival, what it means for your life, revealed in Josiah's window. The mystery of the Jordan will show you the secret of God, of Jesus, and your life on how to live in God's greatest blessings. You will also receive a bonus DVD called The Cup of Reeling. Jerusalem, discover why the ancient city of Jerusalem is the center of current events and the future of the world. You can also receive the Study of the Mysteries offer for a donation of $85 or more to the ministry. In this offer, you will receive The Mysteries, Volume 20, The Mystery of Kings and More, eight DVD collections, Rabbi's best-selling new book, The Book of Mysteries, 
and the brand new book of mysteries, Prayer Journal. This prayer journal is the perfect companion to the book of mysteries. You can record your thoughts and prayers and this pages that correspond to each mystery. This book comes in a beautiful leather-like binding with the lettering impressed into the cover. You will also receive the Harbinger Man DVD as a special bonus when you order the Study of the Mysteries offer for a donation of $85 or more to the ministry. This is a value of $200. The new book of mysteries journal and the beautiful book of mysteries, one of the most amazing books I've ever read. And it has also the Harbinger Way. The, the Harbinger a Man. video about mm -hmm. Rabbi and what the, the Harbinger's all about. Mm -hmm. And then if you want a bonus on top of that, you can ask for my video of the interview with Ronald Reagan yes. from about 35 years ago that is so prophetic that mm -hmm. you ought to read it now or see yes. it now, yes. actually. Yes. So you can get that for a gift of just $85 yes. for yes. all of this. And it's something very special. We'll, we'll go on. Yes. About uh, the yeah, Temple well, Mount a little yeah, more? Yeah, let's, Jeru yeah, let's, let's, let's Jerusalem. talk about the prophetic in Jerusalem, and then we'll get back to the Mr. the Kings. Um, yeah, because this is the center of everything. You know, and just since I was last here, something major happened. United Nations, America, America, uh, this is Obama planned this, on doubt, without any question, America abandoned Israel over Jerusalem. So what is the issue of Jerusalem? Jerusalem is the center of biblical prophecy. Everything is centering on it. That's the end game. That's the final goal. It's Jerusalem. So we need to know where we are in this. And let me just give you in maybe, maybe two minutes or so, uh, 4,000 years of Jerusalem's history. Just so you have an idea, okay? Just so you have an okay. idea, okay? You have, it becomes the capital of the kingdom of David. The capital, Jerusalem, becomes all the tribes go up. It's the center of everything. The temple, Jerusalem, the holy city, Israel's beloved Jerusalem. Then comes Babylon. Babylon comes in, 586 BC, and they destroy Jerusalem, take the people captive for 70 years. They come back, and they come back under Nehemiah, Jer uh, Ezra, Zerubbabel, and they rebuild Jerusalem. Jerusalem becomes now, this is the second temple, second Jerusalem, and now Messiah comes. Messiah comes to Jerusalem, weeps over it, because he says, there's not one stone that's going to be left on the other, because Israel, you didn't recognize the time of your visitation, and you won't see me again until you say, Baruch haba, Bashem Adonai, blessed is he. So here, Jerusalem... 40 years later, destroyed. Romans come in, destroyed on the same day that the Babylonians destroyed, night of Av, destroyed. Oh. Jewish people are, begin, they begin scattering them away, and then it becomes, quote, Christianized, Christianized under Constantine. So now, Constantine comes in, Helena, his mother, they start doing, identify holy sites. So they make it Christianized. That lasts for a little while, and Byzantine becomes increasingly anti-Jewish. Then from the, from the deserts of Arabia comes the new force and comes this, this merchant trader who believes he's a prophet, Mohammed. He sweeps across the Middle East and then after Mohammed, they, they get to Jerusalem. The Muslims look it all over. They convert the churches where they can, their general policy, you convert it into a mosque or build a mosque right over it or buy it higher. They make it Muslim. They declare the Temple Mount is now the third holiest site in Islam until finally in the Middle Ages comes the Crusades. The Pope calls for a crusade to take back Jerusalem and take back the Middle East. Then the Muslims take it back. Saladin comes back. It becomes an, a Muslim uh, ruled city again for years and years and years until, well, still comes the next power, the Ottoman Turkish Empire rises up. Now, they're not, they're not Arabs, but they're Muslim. So comes the World, World War I, and the Ottoman Empire is drawn into the war. And so what happens is, in 1917, Ottoman Empire begins to collapse, crumble. Jerusalem, for the first time in 2,000 years, Israel comes into the hand of a, of a power that is favorable to the Jewish people, the British Empire. But then what happens is comes World War II. And now Jewish people are fleeing for their lives from Hitler. After the war, you have Jewish people, you have the Arabs, and the British, the Britain Empire says, we can't, we don't want to handle this anymore, gives it to this little this, this organization meeting in New York called the, the Beginning of the United Nations. They say, you t deal with it. 1947, the UN votes to make, to split up the land, make one part Arab, one part Jewish. 
The, the Jewish people say it's not what we want, but we'll accept it. The Arabs say no way. And then, and they, so Jerusalem will go to nobody. It will be an international city. We will not give it to the Jews or the Arabs. So what happens is, right after on May, May 14th, May 15th, Israel is, is proclaimed. The Arab nations come in to destroy it immediately on its birth. By a miracle, Israel survives and wins the war. And so now Israel is, Israel is there, doesn't have Jerusalem though. Jerusalem in the war, Jordan takes it over. So what happens is, what happens is the Six Day War. 1967, miraculous, the, all, the Arab armies are gathering around Jerusalem, they're around Israel saying we're gonna destroy you, we're gonna, gonna drive you into the sea. Israel takes a preemptive strike. Six days, six days, and, and in the midst of the war, Israel tells Jordan don't get into, don't, jo don't join this war to destroy us. Jordan joins the war, then all of a sudden now Jerusalem is in play. So what happens is by a miracle, Israeli soldiers enter the gate of the lions, they come in under heavy fire, they get to that western wall, they weep, they break down and weep, the rabbi, uh, the rabbi comes with them and he sounds the shofar, remember we spoke in the, the Shemitah, it's the Jubilee, remember something about that rabbi, it's, it's Israel's Jubilee, they're getting back their inheritance, they're coming back to their land, you know what was, what was that land before at the beginning when David actually purchased it, it says every, everyone will return to their land, you know, he purchased it, it was a threshing floor. Remember that, the yes. Temple Mount? Yes. Yes. In Hebrew, the word for threshing floor is Goran. The rabbi who sounded it, his name was Rabbi Goran. Rabbi Threshing Floor. That's <laughs> and amazing. he's the one who sounded it. So now, Jerusalem <laughs> is back, and they say it's back in our hands, and we will, we will never leave Jerusalem again. That's what, that's what Israel says. The world goes crazy. UN, UN condemns them, saying this is not your land. And they say, well, we, you know, we, this is our land. Now, now, the, now they've been telling Israel since then, give back that land. You know, if you give back Jerusalem, you won't have any problems. But the thing is, before Israel had Jerusalem, you had the PLO saying we're going to destroy Israel without Jerusalem. So they say that, you know, what the UN's been trying to do is undo the Six-Day War. But before that, they were trying to destroy Israel. So, so here it is. Under Now, looking back at these 4,000 years, when was Jerusalem the capital of any nation for any long period of time? Only Israel. It was never the capital. You know, the Ottomans never had it. Nobody really, and in fact, nobody really cared about Jerusalem for a lot of, for a lot of, much of history. But here's the thing. The Bible says that in the last days, Zechariah 12, I will make Jerusalem a cup of reeling. And those who drink of it are going to stagger. I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. And everyone who tries to move it will be injured, or actually the Hebrew says, will be cut to pieces. Now, how do you move a city? You can't move a city, I mean, yeah. how do you move a city? By moving its, its borders, moving its sovereignty, which is exactly what America under Obama, unfortunately, tried to do. And that resolution, that resolution, it declares it Palestinian territory, Israel's occupying power. It says that, it says, here it says that Israel has no right to Jerusalem. It's a flay, every, any, if it, mm. it's the only nation in history, Israel, that just to build houses, they get condemned for building houses, yes. not for war. For, and so it says it's a violation. And so the Bible says if you try to move it, it will be, you will be injured. Now we hope that the new president will undo that and move the capital and all that. But something else as well is that why is there so much controversy over this? Why, why, why? Because there's an enemy. And the enemy knows the prophecies. He knows that when the Jewish people come back to the city of Jerusalem, Messiah's on his way. Woo. Messiah's on his oh. way. Jerusalem is the city. He clearly said it. He said, you're not going to see me until you say, blessed be he. What, what did he. where did he say that? He said it to the Jewish people, but not just Jewish people. He said it to the Jewish people in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That means the Jewish people had to survive for 2,000 years, had to come back to Israel, and had to come back to Jerusalem to fulfill what Messiah said. Wow. Why is Jerusalem back? Because Messiah said it. Yeah. Why is it back? Because Zechariah <laughs> said it. Because the word of God is true. That's why we have a Jerusalem. I mean, think of all the all the capitals of the ancient world you know you know babylon you know you know Th thebes all, where are they now there's not no place but jerusalem that was back then is still here and not only is it still here the whole world focuses over the whole yeah. world hangs on oh, it okay. i mean the bible is so true look at that just that just that and why is it because the enemy knows and just to just one little and i i, I cut out you know thousands of years but to say one quick thing but <laughs> that's did. it that's on the it's, it's on it the is. album it's on this it, album it's right the, here you've right got to get all of this it's, yes it's, this it's, is the this is history Jerusalem. this is why we're in jerusalem this is why we're in the war this is why it is so dangerous for us to play games with mm, the yes. land that mm. belongs to god yes. yes yes and and a spiritual thing for all of us 
The Bible says that if you're born again, you're not only, you are, number one, you're a citizen of Israel. That's the Bible. That's Ephesians 2. You are now a citizen of Israel. Mm -hmm. Number two, you are also a child of Jerusalem. But the, what does Paul say? He says, Don't, you know, she's our mother. You're a child of Jerusalem. When you're born again, where are you born again? Well, you're born again wherever you were born again, but you're also born again in Jerusalem because that's where you were saved, in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The empty tomb, the cross of Jerusalem, you were born again. So you're a child of Jerusalem. Oh. And what is Jerusalem? Something about you. you. You were all there. I still remember, Mana, the first time you laid eyes on Jerusalem oh, when we came too. before the tour. And I will yes. never forget that, how we, we gazed over the holy yes. city. It was like from a dream. Remember yes. that? Like, yes. And you were, you were weeping, weeping over the, the, the of it. And you were, they were filming. You I, couldn't film. I couldn't film, film anymore. And, and, and the thing is, there's something, you, you know, you can, you be there you never it doesn't matter if you've never been to jerusalem if you're a believer you get there it's it's like you came home that's yeah. the amazing absolutely like you came home people don't want to leave because it, it's weird but you it's like you feel leave. home and the thing yeah. is that the thing about jerusalem is there's always i remember i i think i shared once the mystery in the name it's really of course yerushalayim yerushalayim and yerushalayim doesn't mean jerusalem it means the jerusalems because there's always there's another jerusalem so yeah. what it means is whenever you look at jerusalem it's always more than you think it is there's oh. a, you know you see rocks oh, but the, yeah. there's something about it you can't even put it no. there's something it's more than you there's always more to it and we are children of jerusalem we are True. we are his jerusalem so it means no matter what your life looks like it's always more than you think. Yes. Whatever what it feels like, it's more glorious than you know. Yes. Well, that thing is more beautiful. You are his Jerusalem. And and what is the what is the most what is the most attacked ward over city in the history of mankind, this planet Earth? Jerusalem. Why? Not because it has any great natural resources. It's a bunch of rocks. There's nothing much there. Because it's God's. And the same way, if you are God's Jerusalem, the enemy is going to go crazy. Yeah. You know, and to, yeah. don't, but don't get discouraged. Right. Don't get discouraged. Oh. Because you are Jerusalem. Oh, man. And, be, and because that, because, don't, be, it's because of the purposes. Because God oh. knows Jerusalem is where Messiah is coming. Jerusalem is the center of his purpose. Jerusalem is coming down from from heaven we're going to yeah. be in Jerusalem forever mm -hmm. all that and you are his Jerusalem it means it means when you are encouraged being attacked do not be discouraged be encouraged because the best is yet to come oh. that's what it means that's wow we yeah. needed that word right there for Amen. this moment and our ministry and in our lives thank you Amen. Rabbi oh, my blessing. because you know we do all get to that point and in our in our own flesh yes. and I'm telling you flesh. and and you're like why are we being so attacked I mean you, you're kind of like yeah I know because you know we're, we, we have this opportunity to, you know, share the gospel with you. And, um, but it's still like, you know, God doesn't what have I been, ever let up. Yeah. You know, it but, just keeps getting more. What that's if, because that's it right there. See, Thank you. What have we been, Jerusalem. what have you and I talked about the last few months about Jerusalem? You know, if you go, oh, I know if what you're it, saying. Oh, no, wait, 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 If America gets so bad that yes. we can't live here anymore, <laughs> yeah. and, it could, there. and it could happen. <laughs> yeah. We would like to just, we, honest, we'd like, you ever heard about building a cabin in the corner of glory land? We'd like, we'd, I'd just be happy. Jerusalem is my hometown. I've, ever since I've been there, first time I went there. And, you know, for years, I had to go with you before I toured all of Israel. I got to, Is, I got to Jerusalem, and I didn't want to go anywhere else. Yeah. And I'd go back and go back. And it spent many, many seasons there. Yeah. And I have never felt so what loved and welcome. Menagan Begin, when I would arrive, he had a, a, a chalet like at, at the airport, and he would welcome me there. But it wasn't just that. It was yeah. Jerusalem. I couldn't get over no, Jerusalem. No, no, no. You can't. And it says, it says that in the Bible. You can't get over Jerusalem because mm. God can't get over Jerusalem. And you've got God. And so it says that if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, you know, mm. Jerusalem. And it says, it says, you who love the Lord, you watchmen on the wall, do not let God forget. Do not, do not give him peace. It's one of the, do, not, do not rest. Remind him until he makes Jerusalem like a, a glory to the, to the world. Its light covers the earth. We have warned every president, the brethren and I, the ones that I've been with. I used to be the young preacher. Now I'm the old one. But whether it be uh, Billy Graham, or Roberts, mm -hmm. Rex Hummer, I can name all the old. Mm -hmm. They all, they all would warn the president, don't ever turn your back on Israel. Don't ever yes. sell out the land. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And our last president... Yes didn't understand it. I don't know if anybody ever got to our last president. 
he because he wasn't open. He didn't really have the doors open. To, you know, Franklin Graham was not welcome at all. And here Franklin got to pray at this yes. one. Yes. Yeah. But now the president we have, you may say, boy, he's, a, he's wild. Well, I, you know, I think that's a word you could use. I want people to know and, and to, to pray for our president and to act right around right. our president as far as helping him and standing with him. This is a man, uh, and, and Paula, Paula White told me this herself. She said his biggest fear is to not please God to do something wrong in the sight of God. This is a answer to prayer that we have a president who wants to honor Jerusalem. He wants to move the capital the, the, of the Israel. Embassy. The embassy. Yes. Embassy. Yes. The, no, to, the, the, yes. the embassy. To the capital. To the capital. Yes. Yeah. But, and to honor it and recognize it because nobody will dare do it. Yeah, and he's getting a lot of A lot of, lot of flack. Pray for the, you know, and the thing is that, well, think about this. What capital in the world do people not have their embassies in? Exactly. Only Jerusalem. Right. Only, it's, telling you, it's telling you how true God what, is. What, what's, why, I got you one question that will go on. Yeah. Why are people people so mean? Why are people so anti-Israel, so anti-everything, dividing it, hated it? I mean, they, yeah. they were attacked. Yeah. Israel was attacked and won Jerusalem. You know, they, the war, they didn't, they didn't declare wars on all these They weren't people. trying to take over anything. They were, again, defending. They were trying to fighting stay for, alive. Fine for lives. Now, when Jordan took it and it was attacking. It was attacking when they took it. That's right. There was nothing. Now Israel, to defend itself, takes it. Said, "Don't we don't even want to 